Welcome to Ghost Stories with yours truly, Tom McDonald. We're going to have to take a trip in the way back machine for this one. Because this happened a long time ago. The year is 2012. Thankfully, the Mayan calendar was wrong and the much publicized end of the world didn't come. But it still got weird. It still got really weird. This all started with a music video shoot in the small Canadian town, abandoned Canadian town of Tranquil. But it wasn't until after this whole ordeal, it wasn't until after everything that I'm about to tell you, it wasn't until after all of that that we found out that Tranquil is actually one of the most haunted places in North America. Let's start from the beginning. So there was three of us. There was myself, the music video director, and my producer at the time, Olivier. We all piled into a vehicle on a Friday afternoon and started the long drive to a long forgotten corner of the Canadian Pacific Northwest. We were unknowingly embarking on what would turn out to be one of the most terrifying experiences of all of our lives. Aside from a traffic jam on the highway, it was a rather long and uneventful drive. As we drew closer and closer to Tranquil, things gradually became more and more desolate. The cars that we were sharing the highway with gradually disappeared. The street lights gave way to pine trees and the tiny communities that just dot the edges of the asphalt were just eventually swallowed up by the suffocating Canadian wilderness. Paved roads turned to gravel and the gravel roads turned to dirt roads and the vast forest around us just seemed to entirely close in. And when the paved roads turned to gravel roads and the gravel roads turned to dirt roads, that's when we reached the Iron Gates. Our final destination, Tranquil, had been cut off from the rest of the world for quite some time. Essentially, Tranquil was home to Canadians who had tuberculosis and at the time, tuberculosis was incurable and highly infectious. Sound familiar? They pretty much shipped everyone in Canada who had tuberculosis. They shipped all of those people to Tranquil, this tiny town in the middle of nowhere. And they shipped them there to, well, die, essentially. Anyway, we didn't know any of that. All we knew was we had to shoot a music video and this was the perfect place to do it and we were going to get it done. So there we were in the middle of nowhere. We pulled the car over to the side of the dirt road. We unpacked everything we needed, lights and cameras and bags and outfits and all that stuff. And we cut into the trees to get around the iron gate that was blocking the road and we were on our way. So after a short hike through the trees, we came up over the top of a hill and there it was. Just silent and still and forgotten. There were schools and houses and convenience stores and hospitals and libraries and paint chips just peeling off the outside of the exteriors of these buildings, just flapping in the wind. It just seemed like they were just clinging to a time a little less lonely. We had arrived at Tranquil. So we made our way down the hill and we crossed the train tracks that encircled the town and there was no signs of life. And when I say no signs of life, I mean nothing. No birds, no coyotes, no bugs, no nothing. Nothing like what you would expect of a town encapsulated in a massive forest in the middle of nowhere. So we made our way towards the three dilapidated houses. They were just on the outskirts of town and they were identical. And they sat all in a row. Same paint, same windows, same doors, same front steps. Each house as perfectly the same as the next. Anyway, as we got closer, you could practically hear these houses moaning from years of being neglected and years without maintenance. It almost felt and sounded like something was stirring around inside them. And to be completely honest, I wasn't entirely sure I wanted to find out what that something was. But it turns out that I didn't have a choice. While I was standing there just sort of lost in thought and just 
gripped by this almost tangible apprehension about the situation at hand, something emerged from the middle house. Two teenage kids, and we stopped dead in our tracks. So it was this boy and this girl, and they sort of like bounced toward us across this like sun-bleached pavement, and their demeanor was weird. So they got close enough to us, and I, and I said to the boy, I said, what are you guys doing here? And like I said, their demeanor was strange. Well, maybe strange isn't the right word. Their demeanor just did not fit the situation. They were just like smiling and happy and they seemed like they were excited to see us. And to me, that, <laughs> that didn't fit the vibe. So the boy spoke first and he said, uh, we're just hanging out, just checking out the abandoned town and we're filming it with this camcorder. And I was like, cool, well, did you see anything weird? And he said, nope, not yet. And then the girl just like interjected and she was like, oh, be careful in the houses. Like a lot of the floors are rotting and if you go upstairs, you could fall through and it's really friggin' dangerous. I don't really remember much else about that conversation. It was maybe like three minutes long and they darted off in the other direction and we just continued on our way. So we went into the house that our new friends just emerged from and the girl wasn't lying. There was a massive hole in the ceiling of the living room where it looked like something on the top floor had fallen through and landed in a giant heap of rubble just sitting on the floor in the living room. It was, it was trippy. So the more we explored, the weirder it got. Like inside the school, there was three inches of dust on the desks and the day's lessons were still scribbled on the chalkboard and there was pencils and erasers just littered about all the workstations. And if you picked anything up, you'd leave a perfect impression of whatever you picked up on the surface that you picked it up off of. Like this stuff literally hadn't been touched in years. After roaming through like half a dozen buildings, we had finally made our decision where we were gonna start shooting this music video and we decided on, of course, the sanatorium. So we were walking down the main street on our way back to the hospital when I noticed something peculiar. Pe peculiar? Peculiar? When I noticed something up. There was this small white brick building that was just sort of jetting out of the dirt right on the edge of town. And we had a long day of shooting ahead of us, but Tranquil just felt like it was some sort of portal to like an alternate dimension. And we were just so captured by the mystery of this town that like work came second and we just wanted to explore. So we took off towards that white building. So this building was essentially just like a brick box. It was maybe like 10 feet tall by 20 feet long and 20 feet wide. And it had one of those big metal doors on it. It was like a, uh, like something that you'd see on a government building. It was that light green color, kind of like sun bleached by the sun. Uh, it was missing its doorknobs. I walked over, no windows on this thing. Can't see inside. So I walk over to this big green door and I put my hand inside where the doorknob's supposed to be. And I jerked the door open. So it was dark. And it was not the type of dark that you're familiar with. This wasn't like 1 a.m. in my house dark. This was like pitch blackness. But we're here to shoot a music video, right? So we got lights. So I grab one of the lights and I turn that mother on. So when I turn the light on, there's nothing in this room. There's no windows, there's no doors, there's nothing on the walls, there's not even flooring, it's just plain concrete. It's as plain and white on the inside as it was on the outside. With the exception of one thing, a staircase going down. I'd be lying if I said we weren't scared because we were freaked the f out, man. But here's the thing about three dudes hanging out is none of these dudes is going to admit to any of the other dudes that they're scared because that's not what dudes do. So we're all terrified, but nobody's going to admit that they're terrified to anybody else. So in the greatest display of masterfully fabricated machismo in the history of mankind, 
we go down the stairs. We are so deep in denial and so unwilling to admit that we're afraid in front of another man that we forced ourselves to go down a set of stairs into a black hole inside an abandoned town in the middle of nowhere. And you know what? I could barely comprehend what was at the bottom of those stairs. Medical equipment. Everywhere. X-ray machines and surgery tables and scalpels and wheelchairs and rolling beds. Just everywhere. All covered in dust. Untouched for years. So there's three walls down here. And there's a doorway on each wall. No, no door, just a doorway. So I shine the light through the first doorway. Long concrete hall. I shine the light through the second doorway, long concrete hall. And then I shine the light through the third doorway, you guessed it, long concrete hall. Still neglecting the sheer terror that's permeating every cell in our bodies, we somehow choose a doorway, walk through it, and start our journey into the abyss. And what we found were just more concrete hallways and more wheelchairs and more rolling beds and more hallways and more doorways and more f***ing concrete halls. This was a labyrinth of underground concrete halls. And we decided it was a cool place to shoot a scene for a music video, so we started shooting a music video. I'm not even exaggerating. We probably had that camera turned on for 30 seconds before we had to turn it off because it started getting weird. I just remember saying, cut the camera. Did you guys hear that? And we all just stood there, just quiet and motionless in the 10 foot section of hallway that our lights would illuminate. And I am not kidding you. Somewhere out there beyond where our lights could reach. Footsteps. I remember my producer, Olivier, just sort of laughing like, no way. No way. We just stood there, frozen with fear. We just stood there and we just, we just listened. And we heard voices. Voices somewhere way out there in that maze of concrete hallways, just echoing through everywhere. And I just said, yo, pack up the camera. Let's get the out of here now. As we're packing up to leave, I noticed that just out of our light's reach, I see a door and it's a big ass metal one. So I squeeze past Olivier and I walk over to the door. It's this giant steel door and it's just flush with the concrete inside this hallway. And I just push it open. It's the basement of a house. I just said, yo, sh shine that light over here. And there's another big metal door six feet away. And I walk up to it and I push it open basement of a house and then another door and I push that open and it's a basement of a house and as we walk out of this labyrinth of concrete hallways more doors more basements of more houses so it was at this point that I realized that this wasn't a regular town there was something going on here something that required every house in town to be accessible by these underground tunnels that all led to a massive underground medical lab. Needless to say, we needed to shoot this music video and get the hell out of there. By the time we found our way out of these underground tunnels and we reached the surface of Tranquil once again, it had, it had gotten dark. And you know what's creepier than an abandoned town in the middle of nowhere with an underground mad scientist lab? A creepy ass abandoned town in the middle of nowhere with an underground mad scientist lab in the dark son that being said the next couple hours went by rather smoothly and we got some cool shots and some cool places we pretty much got everything we needed and had wrapped up the music video but this is where the really haunted starts we finish the shoot pack up the gear hike up the hill sneak through the trees go around the iron gate and get back to the car we've escaped tranquil or so we thought we load everything into the trunk of the car and the director says, oh, I'm missing one of my lights. I'm missing a light. And I'm like, so what, dude? That light. 
let's get the f out of here. And the director goes, oh, well, it's a, it was a $1,200 light. And I said, I don't give a f I'm not going back into the creepy abandoned town in the middle of nowhere with the underground mad f***ing scientist lab. I'm not going back. And Olivier says, I, I'm, I'm with Tom. I'm not, I'm not going back either. And the director says, somebody has to go back because I need that light. So let's all play rock, paper, scissors for it. And the loser goes back into the town to get the light. Look, I never liked f***ing rock, paper, scissors. I hate that. When there's something that somebody has to do and it's an undesirable task, everybody's always like, let's play rock, paper, scissors. I f***ing hate rock, paper, scissors. It's an impossible f***ing game to win. I always f***ing lose. We agree we'll play rock, paper, scissors. Guess f***ing what? I lose. Of course, I f***ing lose. But I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm acting like a child, and Olivier has always been the more mature of our sort of duo. So he stands up, and he's just sick of listening to us and complain. And he goes, you know what? I will go back. I'll go back and get the light. Where is it? And the director says, it's in the sanatorium. Of course it's in the sanatorium. Where else would it be? Where else would the, would the lost light be than the most haunted possible place in this abandoned town? It wouldn't make any sense for it to be anywhere else. Olivier goes, okay, cool, I'll go get the light. And with that, Olivier just turns and walks into the darkness. I turn to the director and I'm just like, dude, give me a flashlight. You gotta understand, Olivier isn't just my producer at this point, he's my best friend. And I cannot in good conscience let my best friend wander back into an abandoned town to get somebody else's light by himself. I just can't do it. So I run to catch up with him. So I reach him and I'm like, I got us a flashlight. And Olivier turns and looks at me and he doesn't say anything. He just smiles like a full teeth grin, like one of those smiles that somebody makes when they're terrified or when they're fully aware that they're making a very poor decision and they're about to do something really stupid. Through the forest, around the fence, up the hill, down into the valley, we are back in tranquil. It's pitch black now and I'm carrying this little rinky dinky ass flashlight and we're just navigating through the town and we're on the way back to the sanatorium. I ask Olivier, where, where do you think, do you have any idea where we put this light? Olivier says, yeah, it's in the big main room. I saw him put it down there. I just don't like him. So I was just gonna let him leave it there and, and hope that nobody noticed and we just drive home and we'd have a good chuckle about this later on. So somehow I managed to let out a muffled laugh because it's funny, but at the same time, it's the reason why I'm standing in an abandoned town in the middle of nowhere with a creepy ass mad scientist underground lab at like two in the morning. We go up the, the old wooden stairs and push this giant creaky ass door open and step inside the sanatorium and we're at the end of this long hallway. And at the end of that long hallway, there's a giant big massive open room and that's where the light is. So we start walking down this hallway and there's doorways lining this hallway and they're all the padded rooms that crazy people would hang out in. We get into the big main room and as we enter this big main room, I shine the flashlight up on the wall and just like this perfect massive piece of art up on the wall, it is painted, please burn me down. Olivier says, oh, there's the light, walks over, picks the light up, and now that we have this all-important light in our possession, we turn and start walking back down that hallway towards the main door. Now, what happens next is probably the most horrendous thing that I've ever witnessed in my life, and I'm sure Olivier would say the same thing. In fact, I might actually call him and get his account for this video, but what happens next is the single most horrendous thing that I've ever witnessed in my life. So like I said, the hallway is lined with doors on both sides, right? And they're like holding cells or they're like padded rooms or something. You know the ones? Yeah, you know the ones. 
Now, I'm not exactly sure how to explain this. You know that feeling you get when somebody is watching you? Or you know when you see something out of the corner of your eye and you quickly turn your head and there's nothing there? Or you feel the hair raise up on the back of your neck like someone's standing behind you, but by the time you spin around to face it, it's gone? Okay, that happened to both of us at the exact same time. Except something was watching us. And that thing in the corner of your eye that you don't expect to see when you look, we saw it. And that thing that you feel behind you when the hair raises up on your neck and you spin around and when you spin around it's gone, it was there when we spun around. In perfect synchronization, all this shit happened. We turn and shine the flashlight into the padded room next to us and there it is. A shadow standing up from the floor. Not a shadow cast on the floor, a shadow standing up off the floor. It looked just like a person, except it wasn't a person. It was featureless and almost transparent and massive and daunting and rigidly standing there with its arms by its sides. You can't see from where you're at right now, but I have goosebumps all over me. And at the same time, we just started to run. And we were so scared and it was so dark. We were just like two frantic animals running from a predator. It was like some sort of primal survival instinct had taken over and we were just absolutely frantic and we were falling over each other and tripping over rubble and tripping over pieces of fallen wall and ladders and all of this stuff that we can't see in the dark. And somehow we made it to the front door. We kicked that mother open and ran out into the middle of the street. And we didn't stop running. We weren't even thinking. We were just moving as fast as we could, as far away from whatever the hell that thing was, as far away as we could get. As fast as we could get there, we were going. And after running for what seemed like a marathon, we just finally stopped and we almost collapsed on the ground and we're just spinning our heads like a swivel from side to side, just tr trying to orient ourselves and, and gain some sort of information about where we had ran to. And I, I'm gasping for breath and looking around and I'd say to Olivier, where are we? And Olivier says, I don't, I don't know. And I picked a flashlight up and I flash it around and I'm looking. And that's when I have another terrifying realization and I say out loud, dude, we're lost. And I mean, we're so scared and it's so dark and this town is so big that we've completely lost ourselves in what's transpired here. Now I remember Olivier gasping, oh, I think the car's that way. You know, and he just kind of kind of points out with one hand, just totally exhausted. So I turn the flashlight in the direction that he's pointing. And I shit you not, I take one step. And this flashlight flickers twice and dies. We're lost. It's dark. We have no flashlight. And there's that thing in the sanatorium. I honestly don't remember the next 30 minutes. And I don't remember the next 30 minutes because we were just running on pure adrenaline and racked with fear. But we found our way out. And this time when we crossed those train tracks and went up that hill, before going into that forest, we turned around and we looked down on Tranquil one last time. And guess what? The lights in the sanatorium were on. So we barreled through the trees and around the iron gate and over to the car. And I remember Olivier opening up the car door and he's leaning the front seat forward and he's scrambling to try and get into the back seat of the car. And I had just had enough. I remember putting my foot on his ass and just shoving him into the back of the car, standing the seat up, jumped in, slammed the door. And I just said, drive. And the director started, oh, what happened? And I said, shut the f up and drive. So. We made it back home, mostly unscathed and in one piece. But you know what the craziest part of this whole thing was? You remember those kids I mentioned at the beginning of the story? Well, when I got home, I started Googling Tranquil. And I started researching that abandoned town. And that's when I found out that Tranquil was an abandoned town where people with tuberculosis would go and live out their final days. That's when I found out it was 
the most haunted place in North America. And that's also when I found out that those underground tunnels were used to remove the dead bodies from their houses without having to wheel corpses through the streets of the town and scare the shit out of all the children and everybody else living there. But the scariest thing I found out, the scariest thing that I found out was that 10 years prior to our experience in Tranquil, two kids went out there ghost hunting and they fell through the floor in one of the houses and died. A boy and a girl.